really excited about today's shoot for several different reasons, one of which is the fact that the bike I'm expecting today is built by my good friend Mark Phillips from Curiosity Motor. Hi there folks and welcome to another episode on the Image Factory Studio channel. My name is Ivo and I'm a London-based advertising photographer and retoucher. Curiosity Motor Style is well known and recognizable with their take on classic Airhead BMW models. Early this week, Mark has shared with me some snapshots on the unfinished bike and from what I saw, the machine features a lot of chrome and highly reflective parts and elements. Therefore, my decision on the light setup will be slightly different from my usual approach. I'm positioning a large diffusion layer between the light source, which is quite hard and high contrast type of light, and the bike, with the idea to evenly distribute the light over the reflective surfaces whilst at the same time keep the reflection seamless and well defined. In other words, we're building something like a large Chimera light bank. The camera selection for today will be a full frame DSLR with something between 85 and 105 millimeters attached to it. The reason for this decision is the requirement of close up details and some overhead full length of the machine. Usually it's a quite a challenge to rig a uh, medium format on the ceiling. That's why I decide to go for something light and more compact. Right. Dongles, everything is with dongles these days. Hi there, Mark. You outside? Okay, I'll let you in. We're still in lockdown, guys. Light 
spilling a lot on the background as we expected. I'm going to try to flag it or block it, so let's see how successful this will be. trick we did at the top of the lights by blocking the lights to spill back I think we got the game the dark background which was my intention back so because this will be our only light for today the top light we need to reflect and return some light back to the bike mostly the front and the rear tire and the tires on the engine so I'm going to use these polyboards on both sides with the intention to bounce back some light can see George you in front of the camera mate oh sorry so we can see one of the this one needs a bit of a movement these two are now out of frame so we're not we're not seeing them in the frame and they're reflecting as much as possible light back to the bike. Uh, reflections is something we need to take in consideration. I think from, I think from angle where we are, uh, we can see these polyboards in the fuel tank, in the exhaust and in the cylinder heads, which I'm not entirely sure how much I like or do I like this, but I think I will take an exposure with these for the rims and wheels, maybe for the frame. Then I'll take them out and do another 
take for the petrol tank, for the exhaust and for the rest of the bike. We got two lights on top. Uh, we got the bike underneath with the diffusing layer and we have two surfaces on the left and on the right which eventually will bounce more light on the front and rear wheel but at the same time generating some unnecessary reflections on the highly reflective uh, cylinder block on the highly reflective exhaust and most important on the fuel tank so my idea is to use these blocks uh, this uh, sorry this reflective surfaces with several different shots then take them away and then do another series of shots without these blocks in order to be able later in Photoshop to clean these unwanted reflections. So, as usual, let's see what the camera will say and uh, do we need any tweakage of the light, maybe reposition the bike, we don't know, but let's see what the camera will say. Start. Yep, thank you very much. So, at first glance, I see I see some stuff that I would like to improve. Usually, as you guys know, I like to start with a very low camera angle, close to the ground. In this instance, uh, I have a few issues with this. I can see the space under the seat which is the subframe. I can also see the two sides of the fuel tank. Like, oh, sorry. Like here. So I really would like to avoid all these I, in general, I like I like the low angle. It's giving a, a very prominent look of this bike. But in this occasion, because of what we see here under the tank, we see the framework, we see the wiring, we see everything, which I think I need to elevate the camera slightly in order to avoid this. Uh, just to mention, in order to try to keep the bike absolutely vertical, we're using this piece of metal under the stand. Uh, unfortunately, this bike doesn't have a central stand. We're using its normal left leaning side stand, which we jacked with this piece of metal. Unfortunately, at the moment, the bike is leaning ever so slightly to its left side which allow us to see under the seat apart from this everything looks very nice i really like i really like the light light on the bike i really like how this type of light really emphasizing the shapes and the finishings of the bike so let's see what's going to happen when we slightly lift the camera i really don't want to lose this point of view but unfortunately at the time we don't have really any other options so i will go for slightly higher camera angle this time the camera with about 20-25 centimeters which I think should be enough to minimize or completely remove this kind of double side let's see if I'm right or we need to go even higher we can still see under the tank and under the seat and Unfortunately, considering the 
scale and size in the studio, the bike looks a bit bigger for this background. So, my decision here is to try to move the background closer to the bike in order to fill, try to fill the gaps on the left and right. So, let's see what's happened when we move the background closer to the bike. I usually will advise the opposite. But this time, um, I think we need to break the rules and things outside the box. So let's move the background closer. All right, so we push the background close to the bike, maybe with about a meter, which will allow us later in Photoshop uh, seamlessly to rebuild the background. Um, now we are at the point where we're happy with the initial exposure, so I think we can start photographing this lovely bike. So this is our starting point, this is where we're going to start. And as I said, we're pretty happy with how the light shape everything around this bike. Captured the three basic exposures. Now it's time to take off the polyboards, the side reflective panels, in order to remove all the unwanted reflections and repeat this one more time. So let's see. you can see the exhaust, you can see the frame, the badge, the BMW badge. If we move back, you can see all the details on the back wheel. See all these lovely details on this bike can be seen. This is just with the help of a top light diffused by a large screen which distributes the light evenly over the surfaces. Okay, so this is another basic exposure without the reflective surfaces. Uh, there is a big difference. And the next step is to use this one and go underneath the engine, exhaust wheels, and try to reflect some light in order to emphasize the shape even further. So, as you can see guys, just with a simple foam board or piece of white card, we can reveal a lot of details in this bike. So we can do the same with the exhaust pipes, with the rest of the engine, with the engine block, with the carburetors. Same with 
the same with the rear wheel subframe so now I'm going to do this gradually starting from the front wheel front disc moving back doing the engine the cylinders and going back to the carburetors swing arm and going to the back wheel and then we're going to turn the bike from the other side and repeat this whole scenario one more time quarter angle so let's see I'm very curious to see how the camera will, will see this um, oh well look at this one guys that's a stunning angle I really love this one this is this is just this is just amazing this look Okay, so um, I'm going to repeat the whole process again for this angle. so we can see the top of the, the top of the seat and we can also see the top of the petrol tank ideally uh, I would like to avoid this type of um, angles where you can see the top of the bike but um, we don't have any other options at the moment, so we will work with what we can. It's time to start doing 
some details. I mean, I see tons of lovely elements and details that Mark included into this beautiful machine. So we need to pay attention to every each one of these things. You can start with the carburetors, then we can go with the BMW badges, beautiful cockpits, which I really would like to show. Um, I'm going with a 105 millimeters macro, which frankly, that's one of my favorite lenses. I have this lens for more than 10 years and I can just say only superlatives for this lens. It's just outstanding quality, very well built, non-expensive Sigma 105 millimeters. Uh, that's the first generation. So I'm going to take the camera off the stand. Uh, shutter speed doesn't matter here because we're on a, a storm light. And I'm going to walk around and with some help of the whiteboards around the different elements, I'll try to capture as good as possible. We got DSLR camera with a Manfrotto ball head and Manfrotto clamp, which I eventually will be able to mount over there on the ceiling. So, bike is safely parked over there. Lights, we position the lights differently, as you can see. Both lights are on each side of the bike, bounce into the Reflective surface, one side position the camera, we're going to wheel the bike, jack the stand, put it in a vertical position, and hopefully the cable for the live view will be enough. So, let's see. said guys thank you very much for spending time with us and thank you very much for tolerating my awful English again take care and stay safe see you next time <laughs>